have all the answers to your cleaning dilemmas. You know, um, that reminds me, when we first moved into our house, we had, uh, you know, some kind of plastic panels over the lights, and we were in the kitchen, and we were going to have some champagne to celebrate, <laughs> and we popped the cork from the champagne, it went right Broke through the, the, ceiling. the new ceiling. <laughs> yeah. Well, from, I digress. Mm -hmm. For many visitors to the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, Cades Cove is a favorite destination. Mm -hmm. Cades Cove provides people a glance into the history of East Tennessee, but for some people, their personal history is hidden in the hills. Yes, and Sal's April Lamb set out to find the history between twins reunited in Cades Cove after more than 93 years apart. Even on a blustery winter day, there is a steady stream of visitors to the Primitive Baptist Church graveyard. Tourists file through, hoping to catch a glimpse of the history of Cades Cove. Here, the history of pioneers, soldiers, and children is described in brief epitaphs or shrouded in mystery by dates that describe a long life or one cut short. Among the weathered, the broken, and the newly placed stones, two pink grave markers stand together. The inscription on both is the same, except for the names in the date of death. In the early 1900s, Cades Cove was inhabited by hundreds of people, including Andy Kay and Frankie Gregory. They were descendants of some of the first settlers to move into the cove. And although a lot of children moved out, they decided to stay. In 1911, Frankie Gregory gave birth to twin girls, but it would be an event marked with joy and sadness. Laura Estella passed away. I do know that the doctor, it took him a long time to get there, and Grandma almost died also. The baby was buried behind the Primitive Baptist Church where the family worshiped every Sunday. The couple moved on and their family continued to live and grow in a little home on a hillside. Laura Gregory, the surviving twin, grew up with five siblings. Her memories of Kay's Cove were getting out and riding on the horses and just things like that. She would stay out all day long and with animals and she loved, she was working. She would talk about how she would, her father would make her get out and work and you know, girls, not girl stuff, work, hard work. Her father worked as a logger to support the family until he was trained as a surveyor and called on to plot the boundaries of the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Uh, Andy drew a lot of these maps that you see here. For a mountain man, I thought that was that wonderful. The park would preserve the beauty of Cades Cove, but the preservation meant relocation for the Gregories. They they walked out and moved the household stuff in a, you know, of course, a wagon, a horse wagon. The family remained close, and 85-year-old Ralph remembers how Laura worked to take care of her younger siblings. Laura was one of my, one of my favorite sisters. I was kind of wayward boy, and I got in trouble. Laura helped me. As a young woman, Laura married Marshall England, and the couple had two sons. But their marriage wouldn't last. She did about anything to in the age where you didn't hear a divorce much and you know she survived and raised two kids it is remarkable to me when most women stayed home laura became a nurse and worked nights to help support her sons she was feisty that's what she was feisty <laughs> she run the show she remarried but her second husband passed away after years alone she married for a third time and moved from tennessee they wanted to move up Virginia and they bought some land, had two big gardens and she was all of 80 pounds out there doing garden work and would call, you know, me to come over and help. Laura's family says even though she left the Cove as a teenager, she always considered it home. She loved the Cove without a shadow of a doubt. She loved every piece of it. She shared the memories of the Cove with her granddaughter and great granddaughter, but she rarely spoke of her twin sister. She just always said that she had a twin sister and that she had died at birth. And she, you know, talked about her name, and that's about it. But the twin was never forgotten. My mother always showed me, had showed me the tombstone, and she always, uh, especially at decoration time, wished she could come, you know, and put grave, or flowers on her grave. As Laura got older, she told her family she wanted to be returned to the cove. 
When she passed away at the age of 93, her family worked hard to make sure her wishes were honored. She called the superintendent of the park. It's the first thing you have to do and have to get permission for us to have the funeral in the church. And the archaeologist has to be there. We cleaned the other twin's grave marker because she could not even read it. Cleaning the stone of her sister gave her family the idea to match the two stones. Lura's memorial service brought the family together to share stories of their history. And they shared the discovery of the remains of the family home and reveled at the fact that the gun of Cove legend Russell Gregory remained in the family. It was used by him in, during the Civil War era in the Cove, and the story that I'm told is that uh, he was killed with this gun. So it's been passed down through our family for generations. It's this family and a lot of history that I never knew that now I know about. The family of these twins say they hope the gravestones will help tell a story of love, appreciation, and the bonds of family. Even though she didn't talk about her, I think there was some kind of connection, and you know, now they're together. An amazing story, and you can learn more about Cades Cove history this weekend at the Winter Heritage Festival. The event kicks off tonight. You can learn more about this weekend's activities at the Great Smoky Mountain Heritage Center website. There are a featured link on the style page at WBIR.com. And still to come on style, Michelle? Well, you're keeping up good with your New Year's resolutions, eating right, getting some exercise. Well, if you're having salad for dinner, don't be boring. We can make it fabulous, so says chef and cookbook author Rosalie Fiorino Harpel. Thank you so much for joining us again. Thank you. Good afternoon. 